In today's video, drinking alcohol and building muscle. In today's video, Steven's a weirdo. Short in here. You should put shoes on. Yeah, I have shoes on. <laughs> Shit. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Paul Arbella from ProPhysique.com and we got my man Steven Bogrand. So you know what that means. Today is Science with Steven. So, first things first, if you're interested in learning about the science behind building muscle, losing fat, looking good naked, well, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you like that kind of content with an awkward twist, Click the link below. My man Steven's got an awesome YouTube channel as well. Sorry I don't look good naked, guys. <laughs> That's debatable. That's debatable. <laughs> so today's video is going to come to us from Mass, the monthly application and strength sport. And I want to thank Mass for their continued support of my channel. They send it to me free. We do these reviews. There's a link below. You can click the link below and get over two years worth of issues. There's a lot of research. And what they basically do is they look at all the current research out there and this article we're about to talk about. This research came out in June of this year. So very, very topical new stuff that's coming out. Seems like the literature related to exercise science and this stuff is like ramping up. Yeah, hopefully. Um, it's definitely important that we put out good information and it can be difficult sometimes with people and human studies. Yeah. Um, just to one, get stuff passed, but two, make sure that it's legitimate and people are doing the right thing. Yeah. So the great thing about this month's review from Eric Trexler, he looked at not only the meta-analysis of alcohol and muscle building, he also went and looked at other research and decided that he thought maybe that should have fit what was in the meta-analysis. So he was definitely looking at all the available stuff out there. So this is the kind of thing you want. You don't want people that are just cherry picking kind of research that fits their biases. Mm -hmm. You want information that comes from many different spectrums and that's what we have here. So thank you, Eric, and thank you, Mass, for putting out such a great publication. Now, my man Steven drove over here in a frenzy. He knew he wanted to do this. So tell me, Steven, why do you want to talk about the idea of consuming alcohol and its impact on muscle building? Well, really, first and foremost, it's for my clients. It's definitely something that I've seen a yeah. lot of clients struggling with. Um, and I, I think it just affects so many people, you know. Um, social drinking is so big, not only, I guess, here in the States, but in other you know, regions of the world. Um, it's, it's kind of accepted. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but when we're talking about being a competitor, you know, keeping a look in our off seasons, um, making the most out of our off seasons, I think it's important to talk about the things that are either going to benefit or possibly be detrimental to yeah. us. Um, so it definitely, it, it bears mention, um, not only for those people, but also for the people that are newer, um, because a lot of times alcohol in particular is misbranded in terms of what's its calorie intake, what's its carbohydrate intake, and some of, the, some of those other things as well. So, Yeah, I think educating is, is a big part of it and consuming alcohol is a huge part of any social equation and I think it's important that we understand that it's this lifestyle that we're into, this bodybuilding or fitness lifestyle, a lot of times it can get associated with this straight edge life where you don't get to do anything, you don't get to enjoy life, you sit in your basement, you eat your chicken and broccoli, you go to the gym, you be come sad. home. <laughs> yes, and you, and you be sad. Whereas what we're gonna talk about today are yeah. some possible outcomes for including alcohol and possibly some situations where, where maybe you shouldn't. So I'm gonna let Steven take over and talk about what this meta-analysis showed. Right on, so this meta-analysis is looking at a few different things um, and they go over a, a bunch of different studies that looked at different populations and males and some females. And so uh, Eric talks about a, a lot of this in his synopsis of it, and it's actually a really good point. Um, but essentially what we're looking at is how alcohol affects your ability to recover uh, from training. Um, and at the end of the day, that's, that's gonna be the big concern here. So they looked at things like the intensity of your exercise sessions and how that affects it with alcohol, uh, the amount of alcohol, moderate and light versus heavy drinking, um, and then some of the hormonal influences as well uh, that are going to be accompanied by said drinking excursions. So really important things. And so hormonally, we're looking at a higher conversion of testosterone to estrogen in males, um, which as you guys know, probably not the best thing uh, for us, um, but definitely not what we want there. Also increases in the levels of cortisol, right? So as you oh, know, yeah. um, cortisol really, really big. Some cortisol, definitely an indicator of a good workout, but we want to manage our total cortisol levels over time because it can definitely have a detrimental impact. Um, it also 
talks about its negative impact on sleep quality. Yeah, if you get blackout drunk, you'll get to sleep pretty easy, but you don't get the same quality of sleep. <laughs> um, and so it worth it. <laughs> worth it. Um, and it doesn't really go into depth about the mechanisms of how um, alcohol is impeding muscle protein synthesis. But from my understanding is that it's looking at the MKT mTOR pathway um, and it's blocking some of the signaling there. And it actually can, in fact, heavy drinking negatively impact muscle protein synthesis or the building of new muscle as well. Just from huh, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, many. I think that's probably the biggest concern is that we put so much effort and time into our diet and training. Yep. Can drinking alcohol derail that. So so yeah. in this meta-analysis, and if you if you have mass and you go to the article, you can literally click on every study that is used in this. There's probably more than 20 I saw in there. Oh, um, but the meta-analysis, um, what I really like about it is they talked about drinking on different levels because mm -hmm. every time we drink, we don't get blackout drunk. And every time we drink, we don't have one. But <laughs> what we do is we moderate depending on the situation. Do we have a glass of wine? or two each day, or are we going out and we want to get socially silly, it's a bachelorette party, it's a yep. wedding, whatever it might be. So let's talk about what the findings were for those two scenarios that you mentioned. Absolutely, so we know uh, for a fact that heavy drinking, binge drinking, um, is going to have a negative impact on your ability to recover and your ability to build muscle. Um, this will be more impacted based on the intensity of your training sessions, but um, not only this, but multiple studies that I've seen before uh, would say that heavy drinking and trying to make progress is a big no bueno, no go. Um, it is going to negatively impact you. Uh, moderate drinking, probably not going to be the worst thing ever. Again, like I said, alcohol in and of itself going to influence the mechanisms of muscle growth um, as well as some of your recovery. So is it going to have a substantial impact? Probably not. Um, does that mean that it's not going to have an impact at all? Uh, up for debate, right? Yeah. Um, so if your only goal in life is to be fucking jacked and tan, or not tan, um, and to just build as much muscle as possible, is drinking the best option? Probably not. Now, what's realistic though? Um, what's realistic is probably that we just minimize drinking, yeah. right? Uh, I enjoy a good beer. I enjoy a good scotch or whiskey. Um, to act like I'm never going to drink again, probably not realistic. Now, can I monitor my drinking? Can I minimize it and make sure that I'm drinking socially or at occasions and it's, I'm still doing the right things to make sure that I'm doing a good job to give myself the opportunity to build muscle, to recover, to sleep, to have lower cortisol levels, to keep my testosterone as testosterone-y as it can. No binge drinking? Eh, probably not a good idea. But drinking it every so often, it's not going to completely derail you. It's a, it's a cost. It's a cost-benefit analysis. So if you know you're going to be getting closer to a competition date, whether that be a powerlifting meet, whether that be a bodybuilding show, probably reducing or completely eliminating alcohol yeah. is going to be in your best interest because the one thing you don't want to do is have your performance suffer because of that. The alcohol will always be there. I know I probably don't have a drink for six, seven, eight months at a time when I'm in competition prep, not because I don't like alcohol, but just because I know when we're talking about caloric value, mm -hmm. uh, there's something that's going to give me better bang for my buck. Um, and, and anecdotally, I notice that when I have two or three drinks the next day, I just don't look as good. Yep. I just don't feel as good. And when you are in a phase of, you know, your, your, your goals are really based on performance and how you look. I really don't like to set myself back either mm -hmm. physiologically or even psychologically with right. just not liking how I look. So that's basically where I come from. And then if I know I have an event coming up, let's, let's say I want to, I know I'm going to Vegas or I know there's something going on where I'm going to drink in excess. I will intentionally change my training to really get a bunch of training in so that I can take a couple days off, relax my mind, go enjoy the bachelor party in Key West and not be thinking, Oh my gosh, I'm derailing my training. No, right. I don't need to recover. I've recovered. Mm -hmm. This is a couple days off mentally, physically, where I can just have some fun. Right. Just because a beer says it's four or five carbs, you gotta look at the calories, you have to look at the calorie content. Remember, alcohol has calories, your body doesn't process the same. It's essentially a weak poison to your body. We'll just finish this by saying, if you are gonna consume some alcohol, don't, don't say, oh, I only have four carbs. Understand that the calorie content of the drink is what you need to track because alcohol is the fourth macronutrient. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me today and Steven here at ProPhysique.com. I will talk to you guys tomorrow.